Hello and welcome to Ignite News from Mohawk College. I'm Casey Alvarez. Let's take a look at what's making news. A local Hamilton couple is proving that you don't need to be a big corporation to make a big change in the lives of those in need. Jessa Duguay has the story. With different crises impacting millions around the globe, a local couple has taken steps to do what they can for those in need. Megan Gracie and Scott Gervais are Hamilton homeowners who are taking advantage of the Halloween season by preparing to open their home to a refugee family fleeing the ongoing terrors in Afghanistan. I realized beyond a place to stay, there's other things that they're going to need because when they get here, they're not eligible for social services. They're not eligible for welfare or anything. And uh, so uh, we thought one thing that we could do is, is hold a fundraiser. Halloween was coming up. We just thought it would be a good time to do that. Gracie and Gervais said that their primary motivation is to make sure that the family settles easily and happily into life in Canada. We're grateful for our lives. Um, and how could we give back in a way um, that would really impact someone's successful life in Canada? That's kind of like our end goal is to set them up for success. The couple had help with the planning. Many friends who are supportive of the initiative offered their time and talents. Everybody who's involved with this, they're not getting even a tax write-off. No. Nope. We're, we're not a registered charity. We just we see that there's a need and so we're doing something about it. The couple recently threw a Halloween party fundraiser aimed at raising money for the refugee family who moves in. Several local businesses donated towards the cause, totaling approximately $7,000 worth of goods and services among all generous sponsors, all destined to be auctioned off to the highest bidders. All said and done, the event raised about $5,000 for the family who will eventually share the home with the couple. So, ticket sales, 50-50, um, which the person who won it donated back. Yeah. to 50%, which was amazing. Yeah. The silent auction, and then actually just donations too. So not just um, ticket sales for people who couldn't come, but actually some people just donated chunks of money um, that they felt comfortable with. The couple are just finishing up on renovating their lower level into an independent apartment, which when done will be rented to the family for free for a year while they acclimate to a new life in Canada. If you missed the event but want to support the cause, you can still donate. Absolutely. So the, the website is still up. It's uh, thecastle.social. And uh, payments, we just kept it simple. So all emails, all e-transfers go to info at thecastle.social. For Mohawk College Journalism, I'm Jessa Duguay. If you're looking to get your Christmas shopping done early, the Handmade House in Dundas is home to the creations of many local artists. Katrina Rathi has the story. A pop-up holiday market is set up on the upper level of the Handmade House, a boutique-style shop in the heart of downtown Dundas, carrying only products made by local artists. For the holiday shop, there are items like Christmas sweaters and festive earrings. Some of the store's regular stock includes scented body products, a variety of home decor, and children's clothing. For a maker and a vendor to be able to sell here, they have to live within an hour of our shop so that we're truly supporting our community makers, not just Ontario and Canada, but truly around Dundas and Burlington. Showcasing products from many different creators all in one place makes for convenient, one-stop local shopping. The type of talent that's in southern Ontario is blows my mind every time I see something new. Um, I'm a very artistic person, so I love being able to create a space that's, you know, not just somebody's hard work, but it's also a really beautiful space that people can come in and enjoy. One artisan sells custom location-based ornaments and home decor. I'll do ones for, you know, Burlington, Hamilton, and but they'll be sent to like somewhere in the States or like they're sent like to Newfoundland and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, it's either your pride of like your childhood home or like it's your new home or it's like a special place like I just did one for a guy and it's like where they got engaged. The holiday market will be upstairs for all of November and December. 
Next month, The Handmade House in Dundas is partnering with Sean and Ed Brewing Company, hosting over 30 vendors at their Christmas market on December 5th. For Mohawk College Journalism, I'm Katrina Rathi. Toronto's Kensington Market is in full swing. Even with safety protocols, business owners say things are looking up. Michaela Komatali has more. Music blasts through the streets. The smell of warm food fills the air. Shops stand around every corner. These sights, sounds, and smells welcome visitors to Toronto's Kensington Market. The neighborhood looks a little different this year. Everyone wears a mask as they shop, sell, and browse. But Ozzy's Burgers worker Cambrick says that things are looking up as the pandemic wanes. After the pandemic, everything getting the normal, especially when more people getting the vaccine. Uh, we're getting better not for now. Visitors can shop for antiques and vintage clothing. Plant lovers can find some new greenery for their home. Even a bottle of wine isn't too hard to find. Frequent shopper and visitor to the area, Jenny Sorardi, says that there's some restrictions she wishes she could change. I love going to the tattoo and piercing places there, and especially with friends. And, um... I would love it to go in with my friend at the same time if we're both getting a piercing or a tattoo just for like peer support and just like the extra excitement of all but because of covid restrictions you can only go one at a time so that makes it kind of a little bit more nerve-wracking you know visitors can also enjoy an assortment of meals and ice cream flavors those not looking to shop can enjoy the tunes and the hustle and bustle of the neighborhood Despite some safety changes, Kensington Market remains among Toronto's liveliest locales. For Mohawk College Journalism, I'm Michaela Comitale. Closer to home, even car dealerships are feeling the effects of the pandemic. I went to a local dealership to learn more. Many businesses across Ontario have had to pivot in order to stay open during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Grimsby branch of Hyundai is no different. In-store changes can be seen in multiple places, such as replacing paper brochures with a QR code for a digital copy, check-in stations for COVID-19 screening, and numerous sanitation signs to ensure guest safety. For newer sales consultants at the store, learning the pre-COVID selling process can be a bit of a challenge. I've been here for about uh, almost 12 months now, and so I kind of started when it was appointment only. So it's been uh, pretty challenging. Because of COVID restrictions, some aspects of the job look a little different. Sales consultant Dakota Wellborn says the staff have made some changes to how they provide information to guests. A lot more of it's being done online. I think we're doing our very best to give as much, you know, information online to, to the guest, um, you know, prior to them making their, their transition into the dealership. Um, has it stopped them from coming in? No. But people really want to know prior to coming in, you know, that they're getting, you know, all their questions answered. Wellborn says, looking back, he took some parts of the job for granted. Maybe a little bit in the beginning prior to COVID, you know, being able to go on test drives, not having to go through sanitary measures as we have. Not that these are bad things by any means, um, but, you know, definitely an adjustment for sure. Even though the car buying experience has changed, Wellborn says the changes have kept the process enjoyable for everyone. Having to screen, you know, each individual that comes through the dealership now and obviously, you know, all in all make sure that it's a safe environment, which it has been for all and, and all in all has been a very comfortable experience for, for both sides, you know, sales consultant and the consumer. The store is open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Saturday. For Mohawk College Journalism, I'm Casey Alvarez. If being stuck inside has you climbing the walls, why not head out and climb a tree? Mac Flett has more. Tucked away in a corner of farmland out in Binbrook, if you look hard enough, you might spy some figures making their way through the red and orange of the treetops. The Binbrook Conservation Area has partnered with adventure company The Trekking Group to offer an unconventional and very physical experience for people looking to change up their routine by getting out of the gym. If roping, climbing, and ziplining sounds like your kind of thing, And you might feel right at home at Treetop Trekking, as Marketing Director Mike Steele explains. Treetop Trekking is a outdoor adventure experience. Um, we have actually six different locations in Ontario where we offer a variety of different outdoor aerial adventure type activities. 
First-timers are put through a safety brief on how to use their climbing equipment and navigate the rope courses, which staff refer to as games, before starting out on their first set of obstacles. Navigating the entire park and completing all five courses, arranged in ascending order of difficulty, takes about three hours for someone in good shape. Make no mistake, though, it's taxing, and not everyone is up to the challenge. On the bright side, there's no requirement that you finish every game. This is all for fun, and it's even designed to cater to the whole family, as staffer Deanna Hutton says. So we have some kid courses. So we have Tree Walk Village, which is an all-ages playground um, with some houses, tree houses that kids can go into with rope bridges again, um, but they're fully enclosed, so it's super safe for kids. We've had toddlers go on it before. Even better. If you're young, in decent shape, and you're looking for a job out of doors, this might be the one for you. A lot of our team members are in their late teens, early 20s, um, whether they're still in a post-secondary program or maybe they're recent grads. And um, yeah, it's just a fun place to work. A great way to spend a day out, and it sounds like a great place to work too. For Mohawk College Journalism, I'm Mac Flett. Art can be closer to home than you might realize. It might even be in your neighbor's garage. Kara Nickerson has more. Sometimes art is where you least expect it. That's the case for the Back Alley Art Gallery in Hamilton's Kirkendall North neighborhood. The cozy one-room gallery is in the middle of an alleyway that runs between Lock Street and Dundurn Street. The gallery's owner converted her home's garage into a gallery two months before the COVID-19 pandemic began, and has been able to open up her space to the public over the past few months. Yes, yeah, so it's actually open Wednesdays and Fridays from 10 until 4, and I paint and I putter, I might be doing some business for the next show or uh, whatever, and the doors and, and curtains are usually open and I get all kinds of drop-in people, usually, especially in the nicer months. The gallery showcases work from Flynn and other local artists who drop in to paint and participate in her art shows. One of Flynn's artist friends was doing a live painting during drop-in hours. During the gallery's closure for COVID, she had time to work on her craft. Uh, it gave me a lot more time to get really involved in my art and to find more of my voice and my style. But at the same time, McCafferty says she is happy to work around her peers again. I find as an artist, we can end up spending time by ourselves. So coming somewhere here and communicating with people that have the same like mind of art and sharing, sharing what we know and what we've learned ourselves. This month, Flynn is opening up her gallery to a wide array of artists in her largest show to date. Uh, up till now, I've only done myself and two others, but for our show on November 20th, I thought it'd be fun to get a larger collection of people, so there's going to be a total of six artists. The Back Alley Gallery's next show is on November 20th, and all are welcome to drop in. For Mohawk College Journalism, I'm Kara Nickerson. You never know what you'll find in Hamilton. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Ignite News from Mohawk College. I'm Casey Alvarez, and we'll see you next time.